This time on Flipping Bangers, we play it smart. That's quite exciting, isn't it? So simple, so basic. Well done, yeah. us. Well done, us. This was a cracking idea, wasn't it? We use all our skill and cunning. It's genius, isn't it? But sometimes the best laid plans. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful work of art. If it's not hard work, it's not worth having. Are just a hill of pain. Hey, let's just rip it apart. What? Oh, no. Well, we bought it, so we better get it out, haven't we? I don't think this is going to be able to be done. We've said goodbye to our day jobs and invested our own hard-earned cash as we try and make it in the cutthroat world of second-hand cars. You've got to buy well, but you've got to sell well. We have a goal. We need to double our money. If we put 500 quid in, we need to see a £1,000 back. But we're forced to the very bottom of the market. We buy cars that nobody else wants. Who else would buy that car? <laughs> Can we keep our business afloat, flipping bangers? There's so many things to do to this car. We've turned our backs on our regular jobs and attempted to carve out a new living by buying and selling cheap cars. Evicted from our previous workshop by angry neighbours, Will has sorted us out with a new base, and apart from having no working toilet, it feels like home. We've raided our bank accounts, and this time we have enough to invest around £500 to £1,500 on each car. You know what we need, don't you? Mm. What's that, then? We need a product of the Ford Motor Company. Oh, Ford, right. Mm. OK. But I'm resisted saying that because I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah, exactly. I know exactly what I'm going to say. The prices of those things are totally crazy. I mean, yeah, OK, a few years ago, you could go out and get a Mark 1 two-door Escort for a couple of grand, and that was great. I mean, look, two-door, two-litre Pinto. Mm. <laughs> 20 grand. See, that's why I never bother saying it, because... Yeah. But we're not going to be looking for a Mark 1 Escort, are we? Because Mark 1 Escorts are stratospheric, and I agree with you, we're not going to afford that. But what we're going to do is we're going to play a brilliant game. Really? What we do is we go through all the old Fords until we find the right level <laughs> for likability and profit. What do you think? Let's give it a bash. OK, um, Mark 1 Ford Granada. Now you're talking. That is a great car. That is a great I car. I love those cars. They're brilliant. I love the shape of them. Big, fat, three-litre V6. Yeah. What could be better than that? But I'm just not entirely certain that's going to work well for us. OK, Orion, what about that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we could. <laughs> but they're a bit like an escort, but not very pretty at the back. Styling is subjective and you have to be careful, don't you, because you can offend people. People like you. People who look and act exactly like me. So motion carried. The Orion is a good idea. They're cheaper than escorts and have a good following. Right, so I've given myself some homework. OK, what's that then? My homework was to find an Orion, the right spec for us. Mm -hmm. And I thought we'd get a gear, because obviously yep. if you're going to buy an old car, you might as well buy the best spec car you can. Good plan. And a good gear will cost you five or six thousand pounds. OK. So then I set about finding one for under three. Very sensible. How's that going? Oh, a blue one. Yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> for 1,895 English pounds. Uh, well, that's about half the price of what you've been saying, so uh, you now have my attention. Well, that's fantastic. So now is the time for me to say that it does have a couple of little bits of badness about it. That sounds about standard for us. And what are they? Well, firstly, it's not been UK registered, which strangely puts a lot of people off. Well, isn't that amazing? But we know that that is quite a simple paper trail, really. Yeah, but it's simple, isn't it? It is, yeah, it's a piece of cake. The other thing is that it's left-hand drive. And that's OK, isn't it? So we should just <laughs> enjoy the journey. Well, that does make things a little bit different. And it does put a massive ceiling on our ultimate value. Well, it's Preston, so we've got a good long time to think about it, roughly four hours. So let's just buckle up and enjoy the journey, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> Many gallons of fuel later, we eventually arrive in Preston to meet Rick, who sells Ford spares for a living. He picked up the Orion from Europe. Oh! Mm -hmm. See, that does look smart, doesn't it? Yeah. Hello, Rick. Hey, chaps. Don't get up. I want to stay sat if that's all right. Yeah. Hello, mate. Hey, right. you okay? Oh, I've got to say, that is a pretty tidy looking car, isn't it? Yeah, it's not a bad one. It looks like, to me, that it's come from the sunny part of Portugal rather than the rainy part. South Portugal, that's spot on. Um, do you know anything about it? 
Uh, I've had a right good loop round it. There's a little bit of rotten boot, uh -huh. only something minor. Apart from that, it's good. Well, that's fantastic. Go. Yeah. Can we have a look round it? Of course you can. You're more than welcome. Fill your boots. I think keys are in it. Won't go inside because I'm cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. See you shortly. Fantastic. It looks strangely disproportionate, doesn't it? That boot on yeah, there. It does. Yeah. Now You're remember right. at the time that, that Ford saying that they made it made a booted Escort because Continentals didn't like the hatchback. But it just it just looks weird. Doesn't look right with the line, and it's absolutely cavernous, isn't it? That is literally the size of a van in there. Oh, it's difficult, isn't it? Because, it, I mean, it's so remarkably clean, but it's got clearly got a lump off the boot there, and there's a couple of lines in the paintwork. And it's got RS wheels on it, hasn't it? It wouldn't have had those. Would have had, probably would have had pepper pots, would it? I would think. Yeah, definitely. And bizarrely, because it's a Continental spec, it hasn't got a sunroof and, and hasn't got side repeaters, which that's going to be a problem for us because it probably won't get through an MOT without side repeaters, I wouldn't think. <laughs> oh, it really sort of takes me back, look at it. So simple, so basic, so, you know, utilitarian almost. But Ford produced a good car here, didn't they? They offered all the little things that people wanted to see on their new car. Look at that. Front speakers, back speakers, left, right. That was cool in its day. I used to love driving these things. They were, they were pretty good. Interior's great, but... The door cards are the thing that really, really let it down. Shall we have a little listen to the engine? Yeah, go on. Well, hey! Wow! Oh, that's amazing, actually. That is really clean and tidy. We're not going to have much difficulty selling something that's as tidy as that. No, it's funny, isn't it, with that engine, cos it was so maligned, wasn't it? Everyone used to say, oh, the CVHs are so harsh and so rattly, but actually, they were really tough and eminently tunable. And this XR3 i spec is, I don't know, 108 or 106 that's, horsepower. That's how I remember it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this should go pretty damn rapid, shouldn't it? Yeah. Shall I have a chat with Rick and see if we can go out in it? Yeah, 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 do. Rick, can we take it for a drive? Of course you can, you're more than welcome. We will bring it back. You better add. All right, thanks. The Ford isn't legal on a UK highway, but a private industrial estate round the corner allows us to drive around, as long as we don't break the speed limit. Sadly, Will's behind the wheel. Well, we know it looks half decent on the outside, don't we? But we really need to ascertain whether it holds together while you're driving. The clunks, the, the rattles, the cracks. And actually, we haven't got a lot of road, so we're going to have to be quick, aren't we? Uh, yeah, but I mean, I can tell you already, it does feel quite nice. And the mileage, which is, wait for this, 78,841 kilometres. Imperial kilometres. Imperial metric kilometres. So that would be about 50,000 miles. And that feels quite genuine. I mean, the car feels tight. Could you give me a little bit more solid data on which to base my purchasing opinions on? Well, I mean, older cars are nowhere near as heavy as modern cars, so they're lighter and easier to drive. Yeah. Apart from the fact it doesn't have power steering. I mean, it does feel quite nimble. It does feel kind of nice. Oh, so we, do we do want it or do we don't want it? I can't see an obvious way that we can actually make any money out of this car. It's a great example of Orion. I know it's an Orion, but it's it a is. great example it, it of Orion. It is, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, this is a spanky little car, yeah. isn't it? So surely you buy the car, you make the plan afterwards. Yeah. So given it's a tight little motor, we decide to buy it. But for how much? It's on for 18.95. Well, I don't know, but I was thinking about 15. What was it up for? Uh, it's more than that. Let's try and push it a bit. You all right, chaps? Yeah. Did it behave? It did. It behaved very well. well. Good. <laughs> I mean, what are you thinking deal-wise on this, Sam? Um... There's not a lot of wiggle room in it. What are, your, what are your thoughts? It is oh. a good one. It so, is a good one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It is a good one. I mean, I was thinking about 1,500 quid. I don't know. I yeah. was hoping we could try a little bit less than that, to be honest. But is it a bit late for that now? It is a bit late for less. that, yeah. I mean, what, what do you reckon? I'd like 1,800 quid for it, and I'm not going to move much more than that, really. Well, I'm not going to move at all. 1,800 quid it's got to be. It's not worth me trying to push for a deal of 1,700? No, no, no. It's cheap Well, I think it's cheap enough. Yeah. You know, I, if you compare it against anything over here, it's... Yeah. 
I mean, personally, I don't think 18, 18 under is bad for it. I think I that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seems yeah. fair, doesn't yeah, it? It's yeah. got to be, really. I'm really, I'm a, I do 1800 as well. Yeah. You fancy Deal. it? Yeah. We're Deal. Good. Happy days. Yeah. We'll keep it on the trailer. Take it away, get out my way. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent. Good right. work. Pound no yeah, check. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it will <laughs> be. Don't <laughs> you worry about that. Ta-ra. Cheers, mate. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Rick's right. This is a cheap car. We don't really know how much money we can add to it, but we've been in worse spots. So, are we happy? Yeah, I'm definitely happy, yeah. You? Yeah, I am. I mean, we've got a wonderful car, sat on the trailer, looking all perky and great. It's all about making some dosh, isn't it? That's the bottom line. Yeah, we, we can pat ourselves on the back. We've done what we set out to achieve. We've bought a second-hand Ford that wasn't overpriced. Well done, yeah. us. Well done, us. The next day, the Orion sits ready for a right reel going over. Hello, world. Hello, Orion. Morning, Gus. Hello, Will. Don't forget me. <laughs> Um, I had a bit of a dream last night about this car, uh -huh. and in the dream, I had a plan. Wow. <laughs> Is it a dream that we're both going to agree on? I think we'll agree. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, I do. Come on, shoot. So the crux of this car is it's left-hand drive, yeah? Yeah. Left-hand drive scared everyone off. That's why we got the car so cheaply. So we change it to right-hand drive, but we do that for under £500. If we don't change it and we do everything, get it road registered, we'll be scratching at three, £4,000. If you change it to right-hand drive, we'll be getting £5,000. Wow. OK, uh, I don't know if it can be done. Well, I think it's probably time-consuming. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Especially from a mechanical point of view. Yeah, no, I agree. If we don't do that, this car becomes fairly linear, doesn't it? Like, we do the dent, we do the paint, we find some pepper pot wheels to put on yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And get it road registered. I mean, we've still got to do that, haven't we? Yeah, well, I mean, maybe the thing to do would be to do all the things that we know need to be done to it and then see what time we've got left, shall we? Yeah, OK. Well, let's call that a motion that's been tabled Ooh. and carried, shall yeah, we? Excellent. OK. Yeah. Should we crack on? Yeah. Okay. It's on this side. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on snapping duty, and from most angles, the Orion looks decent. I'm writing the advert for our Orion, and it's not easy because there are some parts of the car that I can't really show yet, like the dent in the back. It might have different wheels on it. It could be right-hand drive by the time it's done, and all of these things really, really affect the value of the car. So I think I'm going to put in some close-up pictures of the car and be relatively abstract with the description of the whole thing as well. It means there is almost nothing to say. Right, Ford Orion. Low mileage. Well, it's absolutely rust-free, isn't it? Nearing completion for sure. And more pictures to follow. Well, that makes it sound quite nice, but what price do you put on something that does sound that nice? We have been thinking along the lines of £5,000. That's going to be on a fixed price auction as well. It's a buoyant market for these cars. I can also raise the price if I need to at a later date. So cleaning, driving and now writing adverts. Another job on the list that Will will no longer be allowed to do. So the Orion is in and we are locked and loaded. Shall we have a go at the exterior of the car first? Uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. The fierce continental sun has faded the paint on the bonnet. I might give this a tea cut, see if it comes out, but... Yeah, I think it's, it's a nice thing. I, I'm not entirely certain that will. No, it depends how deep the paint is, doesn't it? It does. I'll give it a go, anyway. Mm. This is our main problem, isn't it? Yeah, we can't get away from that. That's definitely going to need a tin of paint putting somewhere near it. <laughs> and that, what do you think? Well, we need to have a little go at it. I think it's a risk. But I'd like to have a little tippity-tap-tap at that and just see if I can bring it up a little bit better. Yeah. It, the, the trouble is with all these, isn't it? You see it and it actually it goes a long way, doesn't it? It does, yeah. I just need to bring this corner out a bit. If, you, if you're happy doing that, you do that. Yeah. I'll try tea cutting that. If that doesn't work, I'll take the paint off of this. Cool. OK, then. And we can uh, see how we get on with it all. Yeah. Cutting off the top surface often brings back the shine, but the paint has to be thick enough. It is a hundred times better. But is it right? 
the trouble is, with teacup, it's never not going to be cracked, and it's crazed and cracked all over it. And I think we're going to have to go so far through the paint to get past the cracks that we'll be into the primer, or maybe to the metal. <laughs> I'll give it a go with a little bit of light wet and dry, so 1200 grade, and see if I can get down to something that polishes up beautifully. It's quickly clear that the paint has faded too much to be savable. So I've taken that back as far as I think I can with wet and dry. If I go any further, I'm going to go through the paint and in actual fact, where this has polished back up, so I've repolished it, it's a lighter colour and I suspect it's going through to the primer, actually. We'll need to paint on there. There's no two ways about it. We mask up. Aside from the bonnet, we want to cover all the areas where the lacquer has peeled. Right, so the car's all masked up. Just got to rub the paint off it now. Rubbing down is time-consuming, tiring, and not all that much fun. And if it's not done right, you pay for it with a poor paint finish. At last, a chance to knock things about. The dent, I'm managing to get it up by hitting along the ridge of it. Ding, 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 ding. And it's coming up slowly. It's quite worrying because I can only just sort of see it and the boot is all flopping around. I'm working upside down, but using a rubber hammer gives me, gives, actually gives me a much better impact than a, than a metal hammer. It's like, it kind of softens the blow. But there's a bit here where the crease is still quite deep, right on this corner. The goal is to get the dent 95% right. See a bit of sandpaper on a block, I can see where all my high spots are. It's starting to take shape. I'm quite surprised because there's such a nasty crease in such a difficult to get to area. Do you know, I think I'm actually going to be able to get this to the stage pretty soon now where it's only going to take a very thin skimmer filler just to finish it off. It's quite amazing. After a bit of sanding and a bit of primer, we can see how we're getting on. We're nearly ready for paint, and so the badgers need to be prized away. And I get into the paint. Oh, look at that. Which we've had mixed locally using a Ford colour code.
Solid paint like this is much easier to work with and comes up really nicely. It needs to dry overnight, so that is a fantastic place to be stopping. A local trip and also time for a confession. I had this idea about a right-hand drive conversion and I really felt someone had to see it through, that someone being me. I found a car that has all the parts we would need. OK, so the good news is, found a donor car, I bought it online, I couldn't not buy it cos everyone was bidding on it, so I just bid on it, bought it, and that's what we're going to go and pick up. You bought it already? Yeah, that's the good news. Oh, brilliant, that's good news. How much? Well, that is the bad news. Oh, no. <laughs> it was what? a thousand quid. What? Oh, no. A grand? I know, I couldn't believe it. It's not that many years ago that I was taking these things to the scrapyard. I know, it's weird, isn't it? That is crazy. I guess it's just the fact that, to the right people, the sum of those parts of a, of a dead Orion is worth a thousand quid. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. And we do need all those parts, don't well, we? So, you know. Well, the, I mean, theoretically, we could possibly sell off the bits we don't need. The engine, you know. Well, yeah, we're going to have to because a thousand quid for the parts we need, that's on the steep end. It, <laughs> it is actually in a field as well, so it might be a little bit of a faff getting it out. You are kidding me. No. Oh, well, at least it should be quite exciting. I do like a challenge. Yeah, good. So, although the price of the spare parts is high, we stand a great chance of seriously improving the Orion and getting our money back on the other end. Ha! Ha! There it is. Well, we bought it, so we better get it out, haven't we? Yeah, because you've got my bushwhacker. <laughs> Stand well back. Yeah. Well, that is some thick old bow. And stingers. Ow! Oh! Ow! Oh! I can't get out now. Do you want me to go in there? I've got I'm my shorts on. I'm actually attached to a rose bush. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. I'll go and get the car and trailer. Bleeding much yet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you are. Right. It's right over the other side. Oh well it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> We're using the tried and tested pulling method to get the Orion out of the field. It's ugly, but it works. Now, where's the electric winch? There is some sort of proverb about if it's not hard work, it's not worth having, isn't it? And that's it. We're now the owners of two classic Fords. We have five days to turn around our cars, and this is a number three. The idea is that we make one good right-hand driver Ryan from a pair of them. On paper, it's very simple.
Big day, yeah? Yeah, this is a big day. A big day of slightly unknowns as well. What, the weather? A, the weather, but B, the unknowns about swapping this car over to right-hand drive. Yeah, I am filled <laughs> with an enormous amount of dread at the moment. Can't wait to get stuck into it, because it's going to be... Well, it's a proper job, isn't it? Yeah, me too. There's a lot to do, though. Mm. And, yeah, and the only way to know if it's all going to work fine is just do it. But I do think you're right. I think it's going to rain. I think we should put that in here. Yeah. Should we move this back? Yeah, come on. Oh, no, there's no steering wheel this time. <laughs> <laughs> the old Orion has been off the road a while and doesn't move easily. The idea is this. We strip the old Orion of its steering rack and dash as they're the main items we need to convert the car over. Pretty good, Nick, isn't it? First part of our left to right hand conversion. Yes. That's quite exciting, isn't it? A <laughs> very small part in a very large jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Have you washed your hands? Of course I've washed my hands. Look at that. They are almost clean. Well, they're a lot cleaner on the side that I'm going to be using. I was just thinking something that, uh, in my mind, this is our donor car. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, let's just rip it apart. Uh-huh. But this is actually the dashboard we need, isn't it? Yeah, so if any bits <laughs> get me slightly vexed or annoyed, I've still got to be really careful with them, yes? Yeah, we've got to count to ten. Right, OK. said this so many times over the years. Cars of this vintage can be dismantled far faster than a modern car, but we've got to be careful and systematic, as so many of these items will be carried over. Oh. <laughs> that was close. <laughs> it broke it. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? So we can actually see what's going on in there now, can't we? All the wires come up from the back, join up with the harness, come up round the driver's side, because obviously that's the shortest route, into the fuse box there. So to change it over, the fuse box has got to go that side. Which is slightly tricky, because on this side there's the battery. Yep. And the bracket that the battery bolts down to, which is welded to the body of the car. Yep. So that lot would have to come out and go over to that side. And it can't go this side because the wiper motor bracketry has then have to go this side. And then that makes that even more difficult because the wiper motor brackets are connected to the wipers, which are in the scuttle, and the holes are in that side of the scuttle, meaning that we would then have to change the entire scuttle panel. Yeah. And that scuttle's had it. It's completely rotted through, yeah. So, massive problem. Yeah. Well, it, it, sort of, it, it sort of leaves us only really with one option, doesn't it? At the moment, yeah. Yeah, to cut the loom. Yes, extend it, move it over to the right side of the car where we need it. Yeah, yeah. Do a nice, neat, tidy job on it, though. Carefully cut, soldered joints everywhere, no crimp-up connections. No, heat shrunk conduit. Oh, it's going to be a beautiful work of art. I think it is going to be a work of art. Do you think this is a good time to take that one apart now and do a sort of compare and contrast? Just yeah, sure. before we get too deep into this and find ourselves backed into a corner that we just can't get out of. Yeah, shall we? Yeah, I think that's the way forward. OK. Messing around with a wiring loom, the only way to make our conversion work isn't for the faint-hearted. We have to tread very carefully from now on. You know, Gus, I'll come up with a good idea. What's that? Well, I think these wheels, cos they look really, really nice, but they could do with a tidy up. I think we could get them refurbed. All right. I leave Gus to the meticulous unpacking of the wiring loom and take the Ford wheels from the donor car for a refurb. They're the desirable pepper pot design, 
and it will be another way for our donor car to give us some more value. Hiya. Hello, sir. Oh, hi there. Hi, how can I help? I'm Will. I called earlier. Are you Ah, uh, Yes, nice to finally meet you. Yeah. I cool. heard you've got a little project going on with this. Yeah, we have. Okay. <laughs> these, these are the very sad sorry wheels I told you all about. <laughs> what I'm thinking right. is um, a lovely white on the face of the wheel. Mm -hmm. okay, that makes it pop, that makes it stand out. What colour is yeah. the car? It's a nice sort of midnight blue sort of colour. Perfect. So the yeah. white works with that. Yeah. What I'm thinking also, if you look behind you here, mm -hmm. we've got a diamond cut wheel here, right? So this is okay. done by a very skilled lathe operator who will skim away the face of the wheel. I think that we can't do that to that. I wouldn't say on the whole face, maybe the outside lip of the wheel. Mm -hmm. We can get that in a diamond cut finish with that mirror machine like finish. And then on the face of the wheel, we can do that lovely gloss white to make it pop. How does that sound? That sounds brilliant. The guys chemically strip the wheels, but I'm not allowed to see that as it's their trade secret. The wheel is then sandblasted, primed and baked. The wheel then receives a glorious coat of Ford Glacier White. Finally, the CNC machine diamond cuts that top lip away, leaving a polished surface. This gives it that extra level of detail that we were looking for. Wow. Happy. I am really happy. It looks fantastic. And it's now been through every single one of the yeah. 139 processes, That's it, spot steps on. that um, it needs yeah. to be done. So the only thing left now is the one little bit missing. I think that finishes us off absolutely beautifully. And do you know what? It's been a real pleasure seeing exactly how this is all done as well. Cheers, mate. You're no a worries. star. Thank you. Since Gus blew a grand on the donor car, was it so rash for me to chuck another 300 quid at the Orion? No. Back at the ranch, I've got to the bottom of the wiring and very soon we'll be able to make our left hooker a right-hander. If I can do this, you probably can too. I'm protecting myself every step of the way with meticulous labelling. You know those moments when your, your world falls away from under you and you feel your stomach coming up? This is one of those moments because... Um, it makes me feel so stupid. So, uh, I've just taken a picture of our bracket on our donor Orion, which is supposed to go here. And what's dawning on me, actually, as I'm speaking now, is that a whole premise for this car to change it from left to right hand drive. The whole idea of purchasing another car, a donor car, for bits and pieces, uh, which was a genius idea, even if I say so myself, at this point seems to be one of the stupidest things we've done because this bracket will not fit on that firewall there. 
because we assumed that the body shell was symmetrical. There would be one body shell for left hand and right hand drive and we would literally just move stuff over. But it's not the case. Which means that... Uh, I don't think this is going to be able to be done. I think that this has all been for nothing. So we now have a very good donor car completely in pieces. We have a very good left-hand drive car completely in pieces. And we just don't have the time or the money to do this. This is a big engineering job to do this. Which um, is genius, isn't it? Absolute genius. Well, uh, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to have a chat with Will in the morning when he gets back. But, uh, yeah, clever, really clever. Oops, so day three ends with a little sting in the tail. Day four. We have five days to turn our cars around and never has so much needed to be done by so few in just two days. Can Will find a way to make our right-hand drive conversion work? Well, the basis of the whole project was that we assumed that this was one shell for left-hand drive and right-hand drive, that it was mm -hmm. a symmetrical car, but it's not, you can clearly see. Yeah, so what we're trying to do is get that bracket out of that car to fit onto this far wall here. Yeah. Right, OK. Well, that... the plate as well, the plate's got to come off, hasn't it? OK, well, let's see if that makes any sense. Let's have a little look and see. Right, no, it's completely different, isn't it? Yeah. I can see that straight away. It's not the fact that I think we, we couldn't do it, because I think we can do it, obviously, given the time, but it's the question as to whether we should do it or not. I think that's the point, isn't it? Because to get that one to fit onto there, that's going to be a whole engineering epic. And even if we do all of that work, we're still not going to meet manufacturers' standards, are we? No, exactly, exactly that. So I think we should, we should put that back together, because it's in a thousand pieces, isn't it? Yeah, that's a thousand pieces. This has cost us a thousand quid. We need to get everything we can out of this car. It's time for this car to donate. Well, let's get it out, shall we? Yeah, daffo. Since Will has removed the wheels of the donor car, it no longer moves, and so we use our specially designed occasional trolley for the job. Good. Is that looking good? That is looking good. That's looking really good. It's all right this I'll time. I'll the jack. Go on, then. Here it comes. There it goes. <laughs> oh. Now we've got to work like mad to get the left-hand drive car back together. So glad I labelled everything, otherwise this would have been a complete nightmare. We are trying to make the best of a bad situation at the moment, so it comes down to the minutiae. The bumper on this one is better than one on ours, so I'm going to get this off, change them over. Actually, the more you look at it, the more stuff the donor has. Bumpers, trims, door cards, mounts, screws, vessels. Gus was right all along. This car is a little gold mine. Spotted another opportunity. The header tank on our car is slightly UV damaged. This one is much better. That looks better. Yeah! Well, I think so. Ah, 
looks like Gus's hawk eyes has spotted something he wants. The seats are fine to swap. Our donor car has gracefully given all it can. It ain't perfect, but they're a lot better than what was in here before. The last ones were all split and horrible. Well, we've got a very tidy left-hand drive car again. We have, and it has progressed a little bit. We mustn't be too hard on ourselves. I mean, look at the bumpers, the door cards, the seats as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Should we go home? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Day five, the last day to make our left-hander Ryan the best left-hander out there. Maybe even grab the five grand we put it up for. Hiya. Morning. Wow, they look fantastic, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they're great, aren't they? It looks so deep, doesn't it, the paint? I know, look at that. Oh, yeah, nice and silver. Nice, isn't it? Yeah, really nice. I'm going to stick them straight back on the car. Great. If I can stop my trolley from rolling away. We've taken a risk with these. Ford fans are notoriously fussy about period details. Time and offers will tell. And now to the donor car. What are we going to do about it? This was a cracking idea, wasn't it? When we wanted to convert our car to right-hand drive, this was a brilliant idea, wasn't it? Yeah, but it was only a brilliant idea for a very short amount of time. <laughs> but it's got worth, hasn't it? Somebody is going to want to buy an XR3i engine with an injection system, aren't they? Yeah, and we know that that is a good running engine because we were told yes, by the previous owners of the car. Yes, exactly and that, that is gospel. <laughs> yeah, it drove when... <laughs> when they parked it up. Yeah, and exactly. there's other bits, it's got indicators. <laughs> it's starting to sound like we're going to park this car out. No way, I no way. I don't want to spend any more time on this. It's been, it's been a deep upset. I think, <laughs> I, think we, I think we just need to write an advert, get it sold ASAP. Yeah. This is going up for 599 or near offer. I'm just reading through this leaflet about how to uh, register your car for UK roads. It looks a bit daunting, but it's laid out brilliantly, and it shows you step by step what you have to do. You have to fill in your V555 form. You have to pay your £55. And if you want an age-related number plate, which I assume you would, because otherwise you'll be getting a Q plate, and it's very difficult to sell cars on a Q plate. So if you want a rate age-related plate, you have to prove the age of your vehicle. And we've got the Portuguese logbook, so we can prove the age of our vehicle. So that's OK. A little bit of fiddling about, and in an undisclosed period of time, the Orion will be UK registered. But for now, we're done. The Orion looks amazing. We spent £1,800 on the car, 1000 on its little brother, 300 on wheels and another 200 on other bits and pieces. The total is 3300 But we'll sell the RS wheels and the donor car for at least 600 So let's call it two and a half. Well, we did start off with a good car. Yeah. But now, we look at it, we have a poster car. <laughs> That's not a poster car. It's a poster paint colour. And a poster car's like a Dino 308 GT4 or a 914 Porsche or something like that, isn't it? Fords of this nature are hot property. We've been saying that all along. Mm. I mean, people of a certain age, a bit like us, are prepared to spend pretty good money on cars such as this. I mean, look at it. It's in a lovely colour and the wheels are highly desirable. Yeah, the wheels look fantastic. I mean, the car looks fantastic, and I actually think you're right. Because if you wanted an old Ford, 
then a Mark One, Mark Two Escort's going to cost you a fortune, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, Sierra Cosworth now will cost you sixty grand plus. So maybe this is the hot ticket. Maybe maybe this is now the right car at this moment for the right price. The local gliding club allows us to drive the Orion, as the paperwork hasn't arrived, so it's not road legal. I think this car in particular is a good lesson in what old cars can give you. Or, or maybe I should say old cars, what old cars don't give you. It's very basic, isn't it? 1600 engine, five-speed gearbox, yeah. just about box standard, but it's a lightweight car, it's got a torquey engine, so it's fine, isn't it? Well, it is it's quite interesting, isn't it? Because all of that is enough to do what it's supposed to do. You kind of got a classic car, but you've also got a pretty modern car as well. Yeah. It's a fun car. It's a capable car. Yeah, you're not going to be going 100 miles an hour and it's rather laugh, have you, basically? No, you haven't. And no, I think that, that's what the Ford fanatics know, don't they? Do you think the fact that it was um, designed as a left-hand drive car and we decided in our ultimate wisdom to change it to a right-hand drive car and then realised how incredibly difficult and dangerous that was going to be, so left it or put it back as a left-hand drive car. Do you think that any of that is going to affect the price of the car? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, do. I really do. We keep the price at five grand because the car is so good and three weeks pass before we get a call. I have got news. Oh, yeah, really? What's that then? Well, you know, this was uh, left hand drive, then we wanted to change it to right hand drive, but we couldn't, so we changed it back to left hand drive, which it was originally left hand drive. Yes, but that's old news. I want new news. That's not the news. The news is I've oh. just had a phone call from someone who wants to re import this back. To Europe. Does that work for us? Well, I mean, that could work because we don't have the UK registration document yet. Yeah, I think the only fly in the ointment was he was saying he wanted the price to include taking it down to a port, but I don't see that that's a problem, is it? I would think if he's prepared to pay our asking price, yeah. name your port. Yeah, I think so. Providing it's not too far away. Exactly that. Yeah, yeah. exactly that. Cool. The deal actually takes a bit of doing, and a couple of hundred pounds goes west but we will end up almost 100% in profit when all the money we're due lands. Yes!